and uh, I have, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, I have got in, in no particular order at all. Uh, Randy has, has got a little presentation that he's going to give to us. Um, Amy Archer is not going to be able to present tonight. She, she um, is sorry that she's, um, she gives her apologies, but she's just not able to do that this evening. And I just told her it was just like fine. You know, we we uh, we'd had lots of people to talk in other in other times, and we'll make sure that we get her back in the in the fall. So it's not. Uh, um, uh, we'll make sure that she does that. But she does give her apologies, and uh, and we'll see us again. Um, so Randy's got a little bit of a presentation. Um, uh, Dave Payne is going to give some updates on the Star Party in August. David might talk about the SIGs and some other things that he's that he's been working on. Dave and Brock have got some images. I'm hoping that some of them will be on the on the on the supernova. Um, Chris is going to talk a little bit about the AGM coming up. So if there's any, if, are there any other people that would like to present anything this evening? Anybody that would like to? talk about anything that's going on. Brenda, do you have a bit of an update of some of the things that have been happening with the beginners group? Where you've been? Well, um, I can start with you. Yeah, we were at, at Cattle Point the other night. I'll at the risk of frightening everyone to death, I'll turn my video on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Got in from the garden. Um, yeah, so we were at Cattle Point um, and um, looking for a few targets. And there was me and Margie and Jill and um, the late spring targets we were finishing. And so it wasn't bad. Uh, other than the car lights were terrible as usual and um, the moon was kind of a bit bright but we did uh, see a few things that were interesting and so that was fun and we're gonna see if we can um, find some other spots to observe from so that's you were kind of where that, we're at yeah you were saying that you weren't you weren't terribly happy with where you were at Cattle Point just because of all the cars going in and out. Yeah, and it, it's I very, I think if you're imaging, it's okay. But if you're just trying to observe, it's very uh, it's kind of relentless mm -hmm. uh, interruption of, of quite bright lights. So that's really too bad. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, so we're getting ready to move on to the, uh, the summer targets. and mm -hmm. And so that's good. And um, some people are doing a lot of drawing, sketching, which is yep. great. And so that's kind of where we're at right now. Yeah. If anybody else is interested in in uh, coming uh, coming uh, to uh, different places where the beginners group is is uh, is starting, it's I mean it's just like not really a beginners group as such. It's just kind of a yeah you know, get out and put your telescopes up and have a good time kind of group. Oh. So. I um, should have mentioned the night that we had up at Pearson mm -hmm. about a week and a half ago. Maybe it was two weeks ago now. It, it was awesome. It, it was really, really good visibility. And um, there were four of us up there. And uh, we, we, we were able to see, see some pretty good deep sky things. So that was fun. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, we were there for quite a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, has anybody been out to Island View Beach at all? Has any, anybody tried that? Well, I haven't we, tried for a long time. So we tried yeah. it about two months ago or six mm -hmm. weeks ago. Yeah. And um, I think it's worth trying again. We're we are gonna try it again. We talked about that yesterday, Lori, right? Okay. Talking yeah. because yeah. what happened was some clouds came in and the light reflected off the city and kind of brightened things up a bit. But I think if you had the right night, it's if you go to far end of the parking lot, it's really quiet. Mm -hmm. And you know, mm -hmm. with the cars and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I do think it's worth trying again. Whenever we have a prediction of northern lights, that's my go-to spot. Oh so, yes. Because yeah. it's I have no northern view from my house and so it gets me further enough, further mm -hmm. away from the lights and 
facing an open yeah. northern sky. So. It's so from island view, it's surprisingly good looking north and west. Mm. East is the weakest. Uh, which is surprising, right? Which is too bad. Yeah. Well, but you that's got Seattle what it is. and Vancouver over there. Yeah. Yeah. The east, so. yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, thanks, Brenda. And I mean, it's been really nice to to listen to uh, some of the newcomers, uh, well, so-called newcomers, uh, putting things up and really, you know, trying out the explore the universe um, mm -hmm. uh, parts. And anybody else that would like to do that, just uh, let people, just let uh, uh, Brenda or Margie or Jill or any of these uh, people know Jill has kind of been doing the, a little bit of the coordinating of um, mm -hmm. some of the some of the the outings and certainly let her know. Um, okay, um, let me see. Uh, David, do you want to uh, just keep going on here with some of the SIGs? Yeah, the sure, perhaps? sure. I'll I'll, I'll do that. Um, I'm contemplating maybe pausing for the summer, but okay. I think we will have one more for the beginners group uh not this week but next week i guess and then um we've been doing some stuff with the citizen science but um it's been kind of sparse because of um uh well summer uh but we have talked about maybe initiating one of the um uh counting the stars uh kind of events with globe globe at night, globe at night. Uh, so um i don't know if people are familiar with that but um uh, uh, basically, uh, every couple of months, they switch over sets of constellations where uh, you actually count the number of stars you can see in the constellation, and they have reference uh, charts. So it's not like you have to count specific ones. They, they have a chart, and you find the chart that closely matches what you're actually seeing. Um, it, it's a very uh, unobtrusive, um, kind of minimal time type of citizen science project. Uh, all you have to do is just record which which image looks closer. And then when you go back home, you can just uh, register what you saw. So uh, I'm just gonna, I don't know if I'll do it during the summer. I might try one just over the summer just to see what people want to do, but maybe in the fall, we'll initiate that on mass with uh, as many people as we can. Yeah, and it's so just, it, oh, it's as, and, it's, and it's, if, if a hundred thousand people do this over the, you know, over the, the the world, then you get a fairly decent indication of, you know, what the light pollution is like. Is yeah, so like the, in, certain, the, in certain areas. So it, it, exactly, I mean, the, the power of uh, citizen science projects is that you're not on your own. In fact, in fact, that's exactly what it is. It's uh, even with the AAVSO projects where we're monitoring variable sty, uh, stars. Um, you, I mean, of course, you, you, you could have your own projects where you monitor the same star uh, and you record the events, but you're always uh, encouraged to supply those observations to the AAVSO, where it becomes part of a much broader survey of, uh, of stars. So, uh, yeah, again, you become part of the power of the many, right, uh, mm -hmm. by uh, contributing. Any questions for David? Okay, um, uh, uh, Chris, do you want to put on on Randy's uh, presentation? Sure, just uh, Randy see. did a did a uh, as he has done before. He did a little bit of a video before um, before he. Left. Okay, so for everybody else that's out there who's been out some doing some stargazing as, at some point this week, this last week, a little bit, a little bit. Anybody been out? I haven't been doing any um, any recording or anything. I'm just kind of just having a, I'm popping out and looking at the moon and Venus and all that. And luckily this week, we've been able to also have the solar telescopes up. Um, either, uh, well, uh, Bill, um, Bill and, um, uh, uh, well, four of us were out at, at the um at the beaver e and we had all the telescopes out there and it was just glorious because the yeah. so, so the sunspots were beautiful on saturday and um yeah it's a scout camp out in we'll see yeah 
out in the souk and and then, then even i even today um when we were up at the center we had uh one of the daubs the daubs out with the white filter and um still showing lots of really nice um uh really nice uh sunspots so i don't know who else has got who else has got a, a sun has got a a white filter or a sun a sun scope yeah david you do Anybody else have a white filter on their scope? Rock? Yeah. Good. Well, it's it's really it is worth it. If you've got a if you've got a telescope, if you can get a white filter, um, you don't have to pay huge amounts of money for it. And it really makes a big difference. Uh, you can see all the spots and they're really nice. And you don't have to spend five thousand dollars on a a lunt or a coronado. <laughs> so, so it's a lot, a lot better. Yes. Were there any comments from the um, seniors that you had at the center today about uh, looking at the sun and the spots? Um, we didn't have a huge amount of time. Um, we were we were in uh, inside and up at the dome for quite a quite a long time today, and then we were kind of hustling them a little bit. So I had the I had the um, uh, just one up they. It, it's hard. It's hard sometimes for people to see things really, really well in the telescope. Like it's, you know, if you don't give them time to, you know, really kind of relax through it and, you know, kind of have a look. Um, it was a little bit too rushed, but we did put out the sun spotter, which is easy for people for easy for people to have a look at. And they were asking questions about that, about that uh, for sure. Yeah. But the tel the telescope was not as was not as as good for them. Yeah, I looked through the sun spotter when I was with you up there one day doing the outreach yes. rover. Yeah, and um, uh, and then I came home and I looked uh online to see what the sunspots were, and of course, of course, they were exactly the same. But yeah. it was that's, it was it was fun then for me to draw um from the sun yes. spotter what I had seen. Yeah. And they're beautiful. I mean, they're just, I mean, the, the whole on, on Saturday, there was this line, I think, Bill, you, you had some Bill Weir is online here and, and Bill had his telescopes up and there was just a, a, a little kind of a, almost like a diamond ring effect or, or a um, bracelet effect of a whole bunch of them in, in one area. It was just beautiful. Are we back? Hello, everybody. Sorry, I can't make it to the last Astro Cafe of the season. But um, here I am, at least on the recording, and uh, I want to talk about the really cool things that have happened in the last week with the supernova. So let me share my screen. And um, we're going to talk about the supernova that we saw in the pinwheel galaxy last week. So just to get us oriented, uh, here's there's a major, the Big Dipper, and we're looking way over in the handle. And the last two stars makes kind of an equilateral triangle with M Messier 101, the pinwheel galaxy. And there's these nice little line of stars that kind of leads you there. Um, Anyway, I'm going to show a few of the emails that many of you have probably been following. Uh, it starts with Dan announcing that this will be the first in-person uh, session for us uh, since 2019. And um, by some freak of scheduling, I was able to join. And I was so happy to be up there. And uh, who was there? Well, Dan, of course, Dan Posey, our leader in this adventure. Uh, Ron Bletcher felt like he was in a candy shop the whole time. He was so happy. And Joe Carr. And uh, several people joined on Zoom also. So Dan's getting to be really good at being able to uh, run these sorts of sessions. And it's a real honor for our amateur club to be able to use this research grade telescope. It's, we were really very fortunate. And so I hope everybody does take up the opportunity 
when these uh, come up. Anyway, most of the uh, evening is uh, spent in the control room. So the telescope's just on the far side of this wall. And uh, this is the picture of what we get in the imager. And there's all these dials and tables and things so that uh, Dan can say exactly where to point the the telescope. And every once in a while, when we move to somewhere else, then it goes clunk, 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 clunk. And uh, one time it made a big noise and everybody got scared and took a look to make sure that the telescope didn't hit anything. And it hadn't. It's just, it's an old, it's an old machine, over a hundred years old train track up there. And uh, when the dome turns, it makes some funny noises. Anyway, that was from the night of the 19th until four in the morning on the 20th. And at nine the next morning, Dave Payne, I don't know how he found out so quickly, but he says, hey, there's a uh, supernova um, that might be visible in the last picture that uh, Dan pointed the uh, the telescope at. And um, yeah, so Dan says, well, we better let the uh, professional astronomers, David Bolander, um, know. And um, Brock then wrote quickly after, damn, I took a picture the night before. So it should be around here, but didn't have it. Anyway, Joe the, said, well, actually, I can see that we got the supernova because there it is right in the raw picture. And uh, so, so we knew that we had it. Problem is, we don't actually get the data. There, there's no way to get the data directly. And we usually wait till the next workday, which in this case would have been Tuesday, to uh, get the data to start processing it. However, because Dan wrote Dave Bollinger um, and they got excited about it, they made the data available. And um, yeah, Dan says, I sent the note. It's a pretty nice place of, of the frame too. If nothing else, this will be an amazing tool for public outreach. And then he wrote everybody. So Hillobs are the people who have signed up for the uh, going up to the observatory and Sky News is everybody in our membership. And um, so then he uh, put the very, very first um, picture. No, no, this is this is David Bollinger actually loaded up the files right away. That's what this email is about. And then in the evening, the um, sorry, the evening, so he got a bit of sleep. And he's getting ready to go camping, but they Dan uh, then um, did a first processing, put it in our Zenfolio uh, directory, and here it is. Isn't that beautiful? So, first of all, beautiful picture. My goodness, look at that with the dust lanes and the beautiful spiral structure. But look there, that is a star that wasn't there before. And if you compare to Brock's picture of the night before, go back and forth, link it. It's also, Brock, what a great picture you took. Really, really clear. But we have a star that you don't have, and that's because it wasn't there before. Amazing. Uh, Dan did some more processing. What I like about this one is, first of all, you see that it's really, really blue. And when they subsequently took spectra, then it's it's a it's a blue spectrum with lots of nice emission lines. But also, this is a deep space star, so it's a point source, but it's twenty million light years away. But it gives it a little diffraction across there, like the uh, local stars. And um, at currently at magnitude ten, I think it's about as bright as the whole trillion stars from the rest of the galaxy. So uh, on Sunday, midday, Dan says, look, <laughs> they've already put out a report, the professional um, astronomers. And this is what it is. There's this website called the Transient Name Server, where people write astronauts about transient phenomena 
in in that they see in the sky and uh here it is kender car and balam so these are astronomers here and um they were able to um so 20.4 so that that's about four in the morning uh pacific daylight time uh on saturday morning and they have with three different filters the g r and i they have magnitude around 13 plus or minus 0 0.01 magnitude i had a cup couple of uh, emails back and forth with Dave Payne about how you get such precision. It just blows me away that you can do that. Anyway, um, so we were able to use a research grade 1.8 meter telescope with research grade filters and a research grade imager, and it was able to do this really good quantitative work. Um, I also love this last line. We thank the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, Victoria Centre, and Friends of Dominion Astrophysical Observatory for their kind donation of telescope time on their public outreach night for Target of Opportunity. So they're thanking us when we should be thanking them because they gave us access to their wonderful um, equipment. Anyway, mutual benefit. Anyway, now that I know about this um, this website, um, I started looking at things in it. And um, when this was published, 2023, 129. So that's as far as we got on Sunday. This is now a week later. This is Saturday evening. Um, and there's all these other papers. That are, like They're coming thick and fast. Uh, but in particular, they have this discovery report, and it's a fellow named Koichi Itagaki in Japan. He's an amateur astronomer with a, uh, what, it's something, well, 35 centimeter um, telescope, F11, and he uh, he's discovered something like 100 supernovas already, but this one is the closest that's been seen in over a decade, and um, when he discovered it, uh, it was about magnitude 15. Okay, and then uh, we took our picture 12 hours later than, than it was reported, and uh, it was more like a, a 14. Okay, it had gone up two and a half times in, in, in luminosity. Uh, so here are other uh, notes. This is um, 1.30. So this is the one that was published right after us. And I really like it. They, it was a whole bunch of these um, amateur astronomers in China. And um, they, you know, the pinwheel galaxy, people are always taking pictures of the pinwheel galaxy. And I've read somewhere that this is the most photographed supernova ever in the history of mankind. But these people were taking pictures um, before discovery. And uh, what is pretty cool is was not seen in all of these photos. And then, whoops, now it's starting to get seen. Magnitude 18, 17. And uh, that was 21 hours before Mr. Itagaki in Japan had discovered it. So they did, the, the, the discovery was more somewhere around here, but here was the uh, previous night. And they've got it, like this this one fellow, Yiming Mao, did a long series of photos. And when they when he split that up, didn't see it at um, 7.30, universal time but it was there was a point there a faint point there at 8 30. how about that okay there's lots and lots of publications now but one that i want to show you is uh these people went to old hubble space telescope pictures of m101 and 
um, they think they found the uh, progenitor um, with a absolute magnitude of minus five. So that is how bright it would be if you saw it 10 parsecs away. And uh, they figured out that it has a mass of about 12 times the sun. So uh, that's their picture. So the supernova is reported to be here in this square. And um, they see this is a negative, but they see in the red band, that's what this 814 is. So it's in, I guess, in nanometers. Um, they, they saw it, but they didn't see it in the blue and green filters. Or maybe a little hint. But um, so they, they figure that it's a very um, red star. And, um, you know, when they do the color magnitude diagram, they, they, they place it somewhere around here, and then they do these stellar evolution things, and they figure this star, if it is the progenitor, is 30 million years old, pretty young, and has a um, mass of 12 stars. When you put this on the whole Herzberg-Russell diagram, it's somewhere around Betelgeuse or Antares. And uh, Betelgeuse, as you may know, is shining brighter now than it has ever been observed to shine before. And this is after it had a big darkening last couple of years ago. Um, and um, is this a precursor to it going supernova? I bet it's supposed to go supernova sometime. Um, likely thousands of years from now, not well, we are alive, but uh, who knows? We might have a local neighbor. But the star in M101 is very much like Betelgeuse, if they actually got the right progenitor. And I think it is so exciting that we got to be there right near the beginning of the story. So that's that story. But I don't want to leave without giving big thanks to the Victoria Center members who made our 2022-23 season of the Astro Cafe such a success. So huge thanks to Chris, who's coordinated a weekly hybrid uh, meeting, and to our web maven, Joe, who gets it on the YouTube and makes sure that everybody who is not available on a Monday night, still gets to see, be, be part of our community. And then uh, every week we have a host and a tech, and I want to thank them all. Alex, Ashesh, Brock, Jeff, Jim, Ken, Laurie, Margie, and sometimes me. So next year, start September 11, please volunteer as a host or a tech. Please give talks all levels. This is a very accepting crowd. You don't have to feel scared. And we just love learning what you're doing and what you find interesting. So consider giving talks next year. And with that, I say goodbye. I was there going to say, here. does does anybody have any questions for Randy? <laughs> <laughs> Just project them out there. We can ask them. Yeah. <laughs> we can always make a whole list of them and give them to them. Yeah, it would be great. Okay. Oh, that was terrific. That was because I had seen I'd seen some of those emails and some of those, but there are a couple of new ones that I hadn't seen there at all. Well, that was great. Well, I'm gonna just uh, plunk it right over to Brock and David Payne because they have pictures. Do you want to go first, Dave? Did we lose Dave? No, Dave's muted. Okay. There we go. Just a couple of pictures of the supernova. Um, I think I've got them on Zoom folio here. Oh, let's see. Oh, 
Now this thing's in the way. Oh, there we go. So I was out imaging M101 just because I like it, not because I knew there was a supernova there. On um, and I took some images of May between May 13th and 16th. Um, so it was kind of all read up on what was going on on uh, in the galaxy. It looks a slightly different than the the other pictures you've seen because what I've done in here is add some uh, some hydrogen alpha signal that I've been taking as well. So you can see where active new stars are being made in M101 by these red areas. So each one of these little red dots is like the equivalent of this galaxy, um, the equivalent of the Orion, uh, the Orion uh, um, nebula? nebula in the M101 galaxy. So this is where all the new stars are being built being built and and you can see the there's blue in the in the arms and that's the that's the uh color of the new stars and uh the night that i had found out i i wasn't this was the night after the plasket uh images is when i took these images and you can see here is the supernova there's this little blue star um, that you can see right next to um, um, the star forming area. Now, um, there's a lot of fuss over a dot, but if you think about all the dots that are in this image, those are all stars that are actually part of the Milky Way. And of all the stars that are in this image, the only one you can really resolve is that are outside the Milky Way is this one supernova, and that's in M101. So that's so all. David, ev everything that is sorry, everything that was a dot, no matter what the color, was in our own solar system. That's correct. I, I mean, sorry, in our in, in our, our galaxy, in, our, in the Milky Way. Okay. Yeah. okay. That's that's the one dot. That's the one star that you could see, and it was blue in my image too, so which is a which is a a nice feeling. <laughs> um, that's the only one that is not in the Milky Way. It's not in. Okay. There are a bunch of things in the background as well that look like stars, but are just background galaxies that you can see yeah. too. Yes. True. <laughs> okay, I'll, I've got some other similar ones. Okay, Brock. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So this was taken a few nights later. I, I have one I did the night before, but I don't have that shown here. I just showed the one that I actually did actually capture it, but I can zoom in a little bit and you can see it right there. And uh, you can see some of those same hydrogen regions. I didn't use specifically hydrogen filters for that, but it's such a very bright hydrogen region that you can make it out even even with a regular color camera. But um, yeah, it's pretty cool. And of course, yes, there are other galaxies. You can see, obviously, there's one here. And this probably is a galaxy. And there's a lot of smudges in the background that are galaxies. But all the other actual stars are much, much closer. So pretty neat. Mm -hmm. And then um, if I go to the next image, I made a GIF. This GIF I just put together for uh, people at work because I wanted to posted on our company forum so that you can see the supernova. I've got used the the old picture of mine combined with the new one. I just stole the the one star out of the new new image just to kind of highlight where it's actually happening. So and while I'm at it I also have a couple other pictures. So I did um, another nice shot of another galaxy without any supernovas. And um, that was a couple of days ago. And uh, topped it off with 
um, oh. the Hercules cluster. So, mm, mm, mm. so one of beautiful. These can be challenging to process. So every year I'd take a couple and try to make them look better and better. And one day I'll get there. It That's, looks like gold, gold dust yeah. in front, right? Just it's, like gold dust. It's amazing the colors. Yeah. Uh, thank it you. Is. Thank you, David and Brock. Has anybody else tried to uh, do any imaging of it since uh, we found it? Or has anybody tried to go out and at least try to look for it? I've, I've got uh, several images of it, but I haven't processed them yet. Okay. Okay. It's it supposedly. Sketch. Oh, sorry. You did it a did sketch, Bill? Yeah. It's and what did you board. what did you see it in? What did you see it in, Bill? I was using my six inch scope. Okay. I put it in some pull in. Nice. How obvious is it? Like, does it stand out pretty? Is oh, it pretty visible? It's extremely obvious. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so everybody with a six a six inch scope needs to go out and see if they can find it. <laughs> and and it's a type two supernova, so it's going to stay bright for quite a while. Right. It'll they usually level out and hold for like people can wait until the next darkness of the moon, hmm. and it'll still really show. It'll show probably in like a small telescope, a three four inch, I'm sure, or just a little refractor. I bet shows it. Well, I took I took some more images the night before last, so I just have to uh, process them the night before last. Or I've I've got two images I'd like to show you guys that I I put together with my ninety millimeter scope. Sure, Ron. Right. right here, um, like this isn't the quality of your guys' images with your larger scope. What I found interesting was. This one right here is May the 20th. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that was taken 24 hours after we were up at the Plaska. And you can you can see the spacing between uh, the supernova and this smaller star right there. And this was taken on the 24th, three days later. And you can see that it, uh, anyway, to me, it appears to be much larger and expanded closer to that small star. So I, I don't know whether that's just the way I processed it, but all the other stars look the same size. So I'm assuming that it uh, it is larger. Anyway, that's all I had. Somebody posted a light <laughs> curve. Who is that? I saw it floating around. There was an email that somebody had a link to some light curves. Anyone yet remember seeing that? It was interesting because it showed the how it was brightening day over day. Uh, Margie, you have your hand up. Yeah, um, I loved uh, Brock's um, uh, picture uh, photo of M. Uh, M13, M13, right? M13, okay. Um, because I had looked it up um, before I went out to Cattle Point the other night to see what it actually looked like. And here is what it looked like to me. Yeah. yeah. I like Brock so much better. <laughs> <laughs> You have to but be patient to make that many dots on a piece of paper. Oh, dear. I remember the first time, I, I don't even remember whose telescope it was, but I remember um, seeing it in somebody's telescope where I, I actually, I could absolutely feel the three-dimensional quality of it. It wasn't just flat. It, you could... You could really feel as though that there there was you know a, there's background and foreground and and that was that you know that kind of almost almost you could kind of envision that 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 field of of uh, of uh, that sphere kind of 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 uh, of stars that were going around. I don't know whether other people have noticed that, but Lori, yeah. was that possibly 
it, was that possibly on the hill in Chuck's uh, telescope? Oh. I was going to say I'd be willing to bet it was Chuck. It was Chuck. Think... Okay, so maybe okay. so maybe so that's exactly his, what it was, yeah. I don't think his scope could point at anything else. Yeah, that's... <laughs> he, I think it was permanently locked locked in place. Permanently locked on M13. No, it's just yeah. gorgeous. Okay. Yeah, M13 has a, the core of it has a frosty type of uh, look, which Brock's photograph captured very well very yeah often photographs of m13 yeah. the core is blown out so there's no detail but that frosty look uh, is pretty apparent in his shot mm -hmm. so yeah i also love i also love the red the red star that's nearby as well oh my god sorry just moving because i was in the sunshine oh. <laughs> and i was okay yeah, just it was just it's beautiful. Thank you. Um, does anyone have any any other um any other pictures or anything that they'd like to show? Okay, Dan, anything further? Uh, we kind of were I don't know whether you were you on when Randy when Randy was uh giving his little speech. I, I wasn't, but it turned out I watched it last night. I was just getting home oh, from okay. from work, and I um, I was on dinner duty, so I had to, to scramble and try and hit both things. Um, no, I I, I hope uh, everybody had a chance to see the the needle I posted, and I'm going to work through the rest of the backlog as as time allows. There's one more target that we put quite a bit of time in, which was uh, John's suggestion. It's called the Fab Fabergé egg. I can't remember the NGC code off the top of my head, but it, it came out very nicely in the data. And uh, then a, a suggested target from Joe, which I expect is going to look a little bit odd in a false color palette, but uh, we'll, we'll also process up and, and share around. And then, yeah, just it was a, a great experience. And I'm looking forward to the next uh, night we get up there and, and hope we get uh, an even larger crowd in the control room. And it was very nice to be able to uh, kind of talk to the crowd in the in the dome, like the very next day, like on the Saturday, on the Saturday morning or the Saturday night, like just 24 hours after really what, you know, so you had some real news to tell people. So that was really great. Yeah, it was fantastic this last weekend because the supernova is, of course, still visible and in range. So the last target of the night was to park it on M101 and everybody got to look not just at a picture of what we we saw but, but the real the, but the real, the real thing. thing live which mm -hmm. they were really happy about so oh thank you Great thank time. you for doing for doing uh duty there on that for sure um uh, uh, chris Skainer, um do you have a little bit to chat about the agm coming up in the end of june okay uh just a minute here and uh, I'll just, whoops, where is my, okay, you should have my share screen up here. You see that? Yeah, yes, we do. So the AGM, uh, it's, this year it's being separated from the GA. The GA already has happened and the AGM is happening uh, Sunday, June 25th um, at, uh, from starting at 10 o'clock to roughly 1.45. Um, and it's, uh, it's free, but uh, uh, attendance is restricted to uh, members. And uh, yes, so here's the uh, the agenda. Um, and you see there's some time set aside to discuss the financial situation of the society. Um, actually, I hope that a lot of it is going to be canvassed by people at the uh, at the uh, uh, National Council meeting, which is happening yes. uh, this coming week. On the 5th. Yeah, on the 5th. Yeah. And uh, on the 4th. Um, and uh, 
and then there will be just very brief reports. They've asked us to just give uh, uh, very short reports from the committees and all that. I'm not giving the awards uh, report, that's Robin, but I think I'm giving an editorial report. And, uh, and then uh, uh, the uh, uh, election of directors. So we have, uh, I guess we have uh, four seats and five, five directors as far as I know. Uh, or five candidates, but uh, I could be wrong about that. And and so that's that's the meeting. So uh, you know, if you're not on national council, it's a good opportunity to get caught up with the uh, business of the of the society. So, uh, any questions? Uh, we hope everybody, uh, you know, I mean, even even if you don't come and stay the entire time, if you could pop into the meeting at some point, um, just to kind of, just to keep yourself um, aware of what's going on. As Chris said before, it's been a bit of a tumult tumultuous year, and um, and we're all responsible for um, for knowing about what's going on and. Um, uh, and asking asking good questions and then uh, uh, being there to vote for our new council so or our council members so it would be really good for people to be um, uh, to be there so we hope we hope you will um, uh, you should you should be able to just kind of just log in with your member with your member ship and then um, and then you'll be flipped back over to register for the meeting. So, okay. Um, uh, David Payne, would you like to talk about the star party a little bit? Yeah, you caught me off guard there, Lori. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Just a, just a reminder that the the, the star party is uh, August 11th to 13th, so mark it in your calendar. Um, come up for the entire weekend or come up for the evening or come up for the afternoon. Um, doesn't matter as long as you come up. Um, I'm still uh, open for volunteers. We need volunteers to man the 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 welcoming table be the be the host um, in shifts. Um, we'll all the more people we have early to to help set up and uh, take down at the end, the better. Um, but uh, things are stacking up nicely. Um, I'm just unfortunate I won't have a chance to to speak to you before um, before the actual party with the Astro Cafe gone. Um, if you want to get on my my volunteer. Um, list though i uh, will keep you informed if you email uh da pain at uh, shaw.ca and i'll put you on our uh, volunteers list do you want to put that in the chat david sure and people can take that and then it will be also on the um on the recording And I think probably the best thing to do over the time that we are not meeting in the summertime as much is to um, just uh, keep track of of anything on the um, um, on the Sky News uh, the Sky News site um, uh, where I think that's all of our members. Is that correct, Chris? Uh, yes. Chris Perks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, if people can. Uh, can uh, put anything there, then that would keep everybody uh, aware of what's going on. Um, is there anything else that anybody has um, to chat about tonight? I actually have found that uh, uh, light curve for the. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which is kind of vicious, I'm sure. Uh, just a moment. So this is actually, I think it's from the AAVSO. Can you guys see that all right? Yeah, yes. So it shows back on the 20th 
and before there's the magnitude 13.5 and then increasing over time wow. and uh and it's clearly leveling off but it's interesting there's a bit of mix here of um some visual magnitudes looks like and then johnson v band i have no idea what that is but that's maybe uh, um that's something that uh yeah, David actually, the v, might actually know about. So. Yeah, the the V band is a standardization of um, uh, photometry. Okay. So uh, the v, the V band uh, typically it looks kind of green, and that sort of normalizes the responses of sensors towards the magnitude. Okay. So uh -huh. it doesn't matter who submits the uh, results. If they're all shooting through a Johnson V, then uh, you they're comparable. Anyways, it's interesting to see the way it's coming up, and it seems to be leveling off. Leveling off. Going to what Bill was saying, it could be up there for a while and gives everyone a chance to see it. Does, does anybody uh, remember what happened with uh, Beetlejuice? It was it was bright for quite a while as well. Mm -hmm. It was uh, dust or something obscuring it. Mm. It went down. A different, re a different reason, yeah. yeah. It, yeah. Went, it, went, yeah. it went down, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if we have any recent uh, supernova. What's the most recent beside this one? I'm just trying to remember which the last one was. Well, there was one I took a picture of uh, a couple of years ago. Where was that? I don't was remember. it in the Whirlpool or? No, there was one in... Just give me a There was one in the Whirlpool about 1976 or something like that. And it was a type 1A, not a type 2. Yeah. If you're particularly David, David, do you David, would you mind just I mean, in your in your inimitable way of doing it so that people can really understand? Can you tell tell people about the difference between the type ones and the type two supernovas? Just if they don't know? No, and I'm not <laughs> refusing to. I just <laughs> <laughs> okay is there anybody out there that can do that for us dan yeah go ahead I, subject i can't hear dan, dan you're muted yeah oh the double mute caught me uh type one super one supernova uh there's a few flavors of it i think it's one a and one c is a white dwarf that's hit the Chandra Sekar limit, which is 1.44 solar masses. And so there's usually a companion star that it's accreting material from. Right. And then when it hits that limit, the electron degeneracy pressure, so the resistance of the materials in the white dwarf can no longer sustain it and it will collapse and then explode. A type two is when a star, a massive star is toward the end of its life and the iron core starts to form and it gets to that same limit, 1.44 solar masses. And at that point, there's nothing that can allow the core to contract without creating an explosion. And so it contracts, releases a neutrino wave and uh, you get a, a supernova of a different flavor, but about the same brightness. Yeah, so one does it by itself and the other one has a helper. Right. The one that I took a picture of was um, NGC 4647, and that was um, Six, four, seven. Mm -hmm. April 23rd, 22. That was last year in April. Oh, okay. I could share that sure. picture if people are interested. Yeah, I'd be curious okay. to see how long that one lasted. We could probably look it up on the AAVSO database as well. Can you guys see this? Yeah. Yes. That That's NGC 4647, and then the supernovas. I, marked by those green lines. So we do, do we know anything about how long it lasted? I don't. Well, we, could, we, could, we could probably look it we up. Could, I'm sure yeah. we could look okay. it up. But. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Um, does anybody know anything about a supernova 2016A? No. No. It, is that the one that's uh, purportedly in M31? I, I heard about one in M31 recently, in the last day or so. But it, it says it's SN 2016. Yeah, I'll, I'll chime in and say that happened in 2016. I believe. Yeah. 
<laughs> that that one did, but I was there was say um, that. I thought there was something in M31 just within the last couple of days. Just, okay, I'm 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 asking, and I'm I'm sorry. I'm just going to do this because I'm a grandmother. But my I have a five year old. Oh, I don't. Can you see uh, this at all? No. No, you can't. Oh dear. Auto blur. Okay, don't know how to do that. My my grandson sent me a birthday card that's about three or four weeks late, and he's 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 drawn. He sorry, you can't see it at all. He's drawn a picture, and then up on the top, he's got S N twenty sixteen A T S. And then the PS is over the side and he says, happy birthday to you. <laughs> anyway, I was thinking, I don't know. I don't know anything about an SN 2016 because I know that they would have talked about the, the new supernova that came. And so I was wondering whether there was anything that was a 2016, a, a 2016 A supernova. Anyway, that's just my own. That's being a grandmother. There we go. There, there's a Wikipedia article called uh, SN2016 APS. Oh, so that might be it. That's probably it. I wonder if it looks the same. Hmm. It's the brightest one to... recorded so far, according to the Wikipedia. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I, now that I know, I'll be able to respond to him a little bit more intelligently. <laughs> <laughs> he would believe you anyways. Doesn't matter what you tell him. Oh, well, that's true. Yes. Okay. <laughs> that's quite true. Yes. Who knows? Anyway, does anyone else have any other things that they would like to talk about? This is our last chance kind of to get together before the end. I would just I would just like to say that there's going to be 12 or 14 star parties between now and the time we get together again, Saturday nights on June the, the 10th and June the 27th. And then from July 8th to July 2nd, so to September 2nd, every Saturday night up at the Hill. And all of the RESC are absolutely welcome as volunteers to come up. And we would just love to have people bring telescopes up and put them on the deck and um, and join the three or four other people that come and do that. We used to have 10 or 12 people put things up on the, up on in the parking lot. And um, it's, uh, we would just love to have people up. And I don't want anybody to think that they don't know enough to like just to come with their binoculars and chat with people, you know, way more than anybody else that's there. <laughs> and, and in, and, fa in, in fact, Lori, I actually would like to invite anybody who wants to learn a little bit more about the hydrogen alpha telescope mm -hmm. that we have, because um, there's not that many people that can operate it. And I'd be perfect to have some more people learn uh, I, I will be doing that over the next uh, uh, couple of months. So if anybody wants to learn about mm -hmm. it, uh, please mm -hmm. come forward. Another thing, it, even if you don't bring a scope, if you just come up and help, because we actually have yeah. let plenty of scopes. We've got two Dobsonians, two we've dogs. got the solar scope, we've got a um, couple Schmidt Cassegrains. And the biggest problem is like, you know, I was up there on Saturday, I was jumping between scopes, trying to yeah. move this one at Venus yeah. and then run back and get this one back on Mars or on, on uh, the moon and on then the Mars moon. later. Yeah. And, and it'd be nice to have a couple extra people up there to help answer questions and man one of those scopes. And that would have given me time to put up the SCT and have it automatically tracking. Yeah, I, we, you know, it so. was just, it was really hard because we, we had, we have, we have things and we just need people. Yeah, so, it's, it's um, so it would be wonderful to have more people up. I'm just, I, I really did like bring your, bring your binoculars and, and talk to people in the parking lot while they're waiting to look through a telescope. People are always want, wanting to know, you know, things about where things are in the sky. And, and if you know where the big dipper is and can point out Vega and Deneb, your gold okay that's that that's uh that's just about as much as you really honestly need to know for some for some of the people it's really and there's but we've got lots of other spaces for people to work uh, to help in the gallery um to learn how to use the planetarium software He's, i can do it so that means it's fairly simple um uh and and the other thing that we do need um is to have um is have maybe a couple of other people as well uh, learn how to use the 16 inch um, that is up there because right now Sherry Butner and Reg, Do Reg Dunkley 
I believe are the only two people that are actually um, uh, trained on that telescope. And um, I'm going to ignore that. Sorry. And um, and we would love to have another couple of people doing that. So that would be great. Okay. Okay. Sorry about the phone call. Okay. Anybody else? Jeez. The host has left. The host has left the building. <laughs> there we go. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. All right. Well, then I think maybe if there isn't anything else that anybody would like to um, to say, I think it's we could kind of um, go out, enjoy the enjoy the rest of the evening, um, go for a nice little quick walk, and then uh, watch the stars a little bit later. Yeah, and actually be prepared for pop up uh, sort of events over the summer. I'm yes. sure somebody will have something going on that they would invite you to join. I think uh, Bill would always love to have you up at Pearson for sure. Or just even in the chosen, right, Bill? Or, uh, or on your own sidewalk. On your, that's Set right, up. yes. If you yes. can see the moon and just hit random people as they're going by, yeah, you will always get, that's amazing. That's really fun. Bill, I'll be coming out for row of future again okay yeah, drag lucky out i will okay everybody i think maybe we'll say good night and um and uh thank you for being part of um of this all all year or if you're new to this thank you for coming in and we hope to see you um over the summertime um, uh, share with each other what's what's going on. Keep us all uh, put something in the in the um, in the uh, on the forums or anything just to let us know how you're doing. Um, and absolutely, make sure that you put um, the August 11th to 13th on your calendar so that um, you can come up for uh, part of the time or all of the time for Bright Angel. So, all right, everybody. Good night now. Have a good summer. Yeah, have a great summer. Bye everyone. Bye.